All right, in this video tutorial, we're going to be creating the floating CSS input labels. Let me show you what they look like. So here's the form we're going to be creating. And you can see when you click into a little label here, a little input field, the label animates up out of the top. And then you can go ahead and fill in the details like so. I can tap through here and say email at email.com. Notice that when I tab out, the label stays up at the top out of the road. And we're going to be doing this all with pure CSS. If you followed my channel, you know if there's a pure CSS way to do things, I love to do it that way. So follow along and I hope you learned something. All right, now I want to give you a little bit of context here when we're dealing with these. So typically in HTML, when you create a form element, you have a label. And then to the right is where you have the little input box. And that's kind of the way they work, right? Where the user types something in right here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, of course, have our box down here. And we want our label to sit on top of here and then animate up when we click in. Now, to do this with pure CSS, we actually have to change the source order of our labels. So we're going to be using the CSS adjacent selector or the sibling selector. And you can't select things that are previous siblings or previous adjacents. So you can only select adjacents or siblings that are after. So what do I mean by that is in our HTML, if we come over here and we look at the HTML, notice that I've got my input fields before the labels. Now that's tip, that's kind of backwards typically, but we have to do that in order to use CSS to select uh, to move these labels based on the focus state of the input field. So that's one change you'll have to make. So I'm not going to type out all the HTML. I'm just going to show you the CSS. I'll kind of leave this here. You can pause the video. All we've really got is just this div that has a container, a simple form tag, and then two input fields. So we have a div and then an input and a label and a div and an input and a label. Okay. These divs have the class of form group. These labels have the class of form control and the, or sorry, the input fields and the labels have the class of form label. Now over here in our CSS is where we're going to be doing most of the work. So I just have, again, a little bit of code here that's just setting up some colors and things for the body and container with a few shadows. So let's go ahead and just take a look and see what this looks like with just regular old HTML. So you can see right now, this is what our form is looking like because we switched around that source order. We have our input field first and then the label is over here second. And notice we do have the placeholder values in place. So the placeholder values uh, we have right here, the placeholder. These placeholder values are required in order for this trick to work we're going to be using. But notice as soon as I click in here, the placeholders disappear. Okay, so that's kind of some of the assumptions. Now let's go ahead and start off doing the fancy animation tricks to animate this with CSS. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of a rule here for our form group. Remember, this is the div that contains the entire element. And we're just going to set a margin dash bottom to be one M's. That'll just help push those things away from each other a little bit. And then we're going to also set up a transition of all and 0.3 seconds. Now we're actually going to be transitioning this form group. It's going to animate and grow slightly when we tab into it. So that's why we're adding this right away. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is actually work on the uh, labels themselves. So, sorry, not the labels. We're going to be doing the form controls. So we'll just add a class in here called form dash label. Remember, this is the CSS that's directly on the label tag itself. And we're just going to set a font size of 1M. Let's go ahead and set a color. And for the color, we'll just say AAA for now. Whoops. And let's go ahead and set these guys to display a block. So you can see now they're getting forced down to their own line. They're sitting underneath our input. And that's good. We're going to set the opacity to 1, just in case we want to animate opacity at a later date. And we'll go ahead and then slide them up. So right now they're underneath the form element. We want them to actually slide up and be directly on top of the form element. So we're going to set a transform. And we're going to say translate. And we're going to be translating on the Y axis. And we may have to fiddle with these numbers here in a minute. But negative 1.25 M's we'll start out with. And you can see that kind of slides them now up. So the labels are now on top of those form elements. So that's looking good. And let's go ahead and set a transform 
origin of 0, 0. And what this does is, if I can spell this correctly, transform origin, is it makes the transformations that we're going to be applying happen at the top left of the element, which is important. Otherwise, you know, our labels may slide up to the right or slide up to the middle. We want them to animate up and to the left. Okay. And then let's go ahead and set also set a transition of all in 0.3 seconds because anytime we want these things to move, let's go ahead and just transition those. So that's it for the labels. You can see they're kind of sitting on top there. Now let's go ahead and mess around with the actual input fields next. That is done with the class that is the form-control. So this is the CSS that's on the actual input fields themselves. So the first thing we're going to do here is just get rid of all the default styling. So these form elements, depending on the browser you're using, the input fields have shadows and borders and outlines and all sorts of things that are applied by default. We're going to try to get rid of some of that stuff. So we're going to set the box shadow to zero or actually to none. And let's go ahead and set the background color. So we'll just set our own little background color here and let's do RGBA. And we'll just do the, I don't know, 0.02. We want it to be really, really subtle. Just a very, very light gray. You can see that gives it a little color there. So there's our box shadow is now gone. Um, let's set the border dash radius to zero. Uh, some browsers apply a little slight radius on those so we can override that to make it square. And let's now go ahead and um, Add a, so what we're going to do on our label is we're going to get rid of all the borders except the bottom edge. I want the bottom border, but I'll get rid of the top, right, bottom, left, or top, left, top, and right. So uh, to do that, we're going to set the border color to CCC. So you can see that just changed the border color. And now we're going to change the border style. And we're going to say none on the top none on the right, solid on the bottom, and none on the left. So that's top, right, bottom, left. That's the way those the order goes in there. I'll scroll down just a little bit. And now you can see I'm left with just a bottom border there. Okay, next let's just make them 100% wide. So we'll say set the width to 100%. So they stretch all the way out. And then let's go ahead and set a transition on this as well. So all and, I don't know, point five seconds or something. Okay, so there's our little labels. That's looking better, but we still have that placeholder text that's inside of there. So we need to make that placeholder text disappear. So to do that, we're going to do another rule here, form control, and we're going to set the uh, pseudo element, the placeholder here, we're going to set to just color. We're just going to set it to transparent. Trans, well, I'll just show you. We can set this to red. And notice now the placeholder text is red. So I'm just going to set that to transparent. So the placeholder text is still there. I just can't see it. And again, that's important. We do have to have those placeholders to make this work. Okay, so uh, that looks pretty good. You can see now that um, placeholder text is gone. And now I'm just left with those labels. So that's uh, much better. We'll adjust maybe the size and padding here in just a second, a few of these things. So the next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of animation when we focus inside of this. So I'm going to say form control, and we'll do this on the focus pseudo element here, or pseudo selector. And let's just, we'll leave the box shadow again um, at none. So and then we're going to also set the outline to none. Some browsers apply a little blue or glow or something that's done with the outline property. And what we want to do is just change the border color. So I'm just going to set that to orange. So you can see now when I click in here or give this element focus, notice that that bottom border turns orange and it also fades in over 0.5 seconds. So you can kind of see that it's pretty fast, but it kind of has a little bit of a fade in instead of just a sudden change. So that's working pretty well now. The other animation I want to happen is when I click inside of here, I want the entire element to grow. And that's done with this new fancy CSS property. So we can say form group, because this is actually going to be applied to the parent div. Remember that input field is surrounded by a div. 
and there's a property called focus within. Focus within. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to style, whoops, I got to add this uh, dot there. It allows me to style the parent element if a child element has focus, okay? So what I can do is I can just apply a transform here. So I'm going to do a CSS transform and I'm going to say scale and we'll just do something, something really big so you can kind of see uh, 1.5. So in other words, like 150% and 1.5. That's the X and the Y values. And now when I click inside of here, I spelled that wrong. Uh, transform. There we go. Now when I click inside of here, you can see how that animates up really, really large. So that's obviously way too big. But the cool thing about this is the actual div is what's growing, which includes the label and the input field together. So that's really cool. Uh, so now let's go ahead and just set this to maybe 1.05. We just want a little subtle change there. And you can see that just is kind of give us a little bit of animation like that when we tab into these. Okay, perfect. Now let's come up back to our form control and let's just add a little bit of a padding here. So maybe we're going to say padding, I don't know, five pixels or something, just to kind of make there a little bit, a little bit more space around that element. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, so that does it for the animation. Now let's finally do what you've all come here to watch, which is the animation to make those labels now move up above that uh, element, that form control when we select it. So we're going to be using the adjacent, the CSS adjacent selector. I'll just kind of stick this one in here the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to say form control colon focus. And then we're going to select the adjacent form label. So in other words, we're going to be affecting the form label, but only when the form control has focus. Okay. And again, this form label has to come after the input field in our HTML for this to work. So what we can do here is now we can say transform and I'm just going to say translate Y. So the Y axis is the up and down axis. And I'm just going to simply move it a negative value. So I'm going to say negative 2.5 M's. And let's just try that for now. So now when I click in here, it should mm, jump up. Notice how it just jumped up and this one jumps up. So that's looking pretty good. Now I'm also going to scale it slightly. So I'm going to also do a scale, whoops, S-E-A-L-E, scale, and we'll just say 0.8. So it's going to also shrink a little bit. So it moves up and then gets a little bit smaller. And notice how it's moving up to the top left. That's what that transform origin did. If I just invalidate this rule and refresh here, you can see how it jumps kind of at a weird spot. So that's why we added that transform origin. So it will go from the top left. All right, last, let's add a little bit of animation here and then one final thing to make it work correctly. So we need to add our transition. So the issue, you may have caught this earlier, but up on my form label, I had my transition, but I just said 0.3. I forgot the S for seconds. So you have to have the unit of measure there. So 0.3 S. Now when I come over here and refresh, you can see those are actually animating as we would have expected them to. So now they kind of move up, slide out of the road and get a little bit smaller and I can type in here. Now the final problem we need to fix is you can see when the user actually fills in the input field and types something and then tabs out, the label slides back over and it's kind of a garbled mess, right? You can't see what is what. So we need to add one final CSS uh, property here and we're going to do this one in this same adjacent property here as a group selector. So I'm going to do comma and then I'm going to add one more. Now this one's going to be form dash control. I'll just type it first, then I'll explain it because it's quite a tricky property here. Not. And then we're going to do a value called, whoops, single one, place holder shown. Okay, then we're going to grab the adjacent form label just like before. Like so. All right, now let's test this out. So now there's nothing there. If I type something in and tab away, Notice the label does not animate back on top. Then I can type this and tab away and the label does not animate back on top. So what this little property here, this uh, CSS rule is saying 
is when the placeholder is shown, meaning if the placeholder is shown or not, when it's not shown, then keep that scale back up at the top or animate back up to the top. In other words, right now my placeholder text is shown. Remember, it's just invisible because my transparent, I set the transparency of that placeholder to be transparent. So it's there, but it's invisible. Now, if I click into here, as soon as you click in and start typing, the placeholder text is not shown because it disappears by default. Now, if I tab out of that field, the placeholder text is still not shown because there's now a value there. So that's what this rule is saying. When the placeholder shown value is does not exist, then also translate up to that position. So that's why we have the group selector here to prevent that little thing from happening. So kind of a weird property and using a not selector and this little new placeholder shown value uh, to test that with the adjacent uh, label. It's kind of a really cool trick, but it works really well. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. You could of course come in here and use this placeholder shown value also to to uh, show the green if it's valid or red if it's invalid using your required and uh, invalid and valid states in CSS as well. But that's how you can animate your input labels with pure CSS. So I hope you learned something. Like, subscribe, share the video, and we will see you in the next one.